Hey, I'm glad you're here. Today, I'm going to try and cover two kind of primary things around Acts chapter 16. And so I'm going to answer the question about the common traits between Paul, Silas, and Timothy. And I'm going to do this in, in the way of summarizing Acts chapter 16. Hey, this video is designed to support my Bible reading challenge. If you haven't looked at that, um, go check it out. It's a 23-week reading program. It has you reading one chapter a day, five days a week gives you the weekends off and all of my content here and on YouTube and on Facebook um, supports each chapter every day. And so it helps you, you know, you can do the reading and helps you give you some greater understanding of what you're reading, or at least that's my goal. <laughs> so anyway, I'm glad you're here. So let's jump into this thing. If you want to jump ahead in my notes to go answer the question about what Paul and Silas have in common, you're welcome to do that but I'm going to carry on with the summary and then get to that, uh, that answer. So in Acts chapter 16, we are introduced to Timothy for the first time. Acts chapter 16 says, Then came he to Derbe and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed, but his father was a Greek. Okay, And that's your first hint about what these men have in common. Second point, and I have six points to make on, on the summary of Acts chapter 16. So hang with me. In Acts 16, uh, verses 4 through 5, we see Paul and Timothy delivering decrees that help establish the churches. And then in Acts 16, 6 through 10, is a narrative of Paul, Silas, and Timothy's travels. Um, and they're specifically led by the Holy Spirit. They see visions and they respond to them. So this, this is a, a period in, of time where because they didn't have a completed scripture, they didn't have the entirety of God's revelation to mankind, they were reliant on the Holy Spirit in a different way than we are today. And so the Holy Spirit was literally telling them where to go, who to, who to talk to, what to say, you know, all these kinds of things. And this is, you know, um, ultimately what Paul wrote about in his 13 books. So that's what's going on in those verses. Acts, uh, this is point four, so we're, we're wrapping this thing up. Acts 16, 11 through 15. Okay, I got to slow down just a minute. This holds a special place in my heart. 14 years ago, I had the oppor opportunity to bring in a little girl. And ultimately, I adopted her. She's about to turn 14. And um, she was just like six weeks old when, when I took her in. But I named her Lydia after the woman that is talked about in Acts chapter 16. Um, so, so Lydia was by most scholars account, Paul's first convert. Uh, she was a seller of purple and that kind of thing. We'll read about that. So, um, yeah, who is Lydia? So let's read Acts 16 verse 14. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God and heard us whose heart the Lord opened. That's important that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. So, Christian, I've got a question for you. Have you attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul? I'm going to tell you that almost all of Christianity has not. That's the biggest downfall in all local churches, is that they're not attending to the things that were spoken and written of Paul. And it's a big problem, but that's a different subject. Okay, point five, Acts 16, 16 through 24, describes a situation where a woman who's possessed with a spirit of divination um, is following Paul and Silas and Timothy around until Paul casts out that spirit. So she's following them around for several days. And finally, Paul kind of, kind of gets fed up with all that <clears throat> because she's, she's walking after them. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> she's walking after them and saying certain things that you can read in, in Acts 16. But anyway, there, there were, as the Bible calls it, her masters that were making money from her ability to divine. Okay. So she's basically like a fortune teller and, and she was essentially enslaved by other men that were making money off of her. And, and so that's what's, what was going on there. But when Paul did that, when he cast out the devil that was in her, um, obviously she lost that skill set to divine in that way. And so the men, her masters, were quite upset by this because it affected their livelihood. So in um, Acts 16, 21, it says, this, this is the accusation of the men against Paul and Silas and Timothy. 
that they teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. So, all right, so here's here's a lesson that I think we can learn is that we we should obey the laws of the land, but up to and until someone tries to shut us up from teaching or preaching the truth. Okay, that's like, personally, that's my standard. I'll obey, I'll obey laws. But at the point that somebody says, you can't talk about Jesus Christ. Um, I'm going to stand up for myself, you know, whatever that might mean. And I've done that. I've done this multiple times uh, throughout my life where I felt like I was being discriminated against. And, you know, I got work policies changed and, you know, did I've done several things to, to, you know, stand up and say, you know what, I have a right to talk about these things. Now, I think the day is coming when somebody's going to hold a gun to me and say, are you sure you want to talk about Jesus Christ? I don't know if I'm going to live that long, but those days are coming for Christians. Okay. Uh, point number six, and then I'm going to answer the question about what these men have in common. So Acts 16, 25 through 40, this is the end of the chapter. And it's basically just describing the imprisonment because of these men's actions of Paul, Silas, and Timothy. And then they have a miraculous release. And so the, the, the jailer that was, you know, tasked to keep them um, ends up getting saved and his family gets saved. And there's mention of baptism, but no mention of water. So that's an interesting point there. Uh, because baptism starts to change and it starts to not involve water anymore. And then Paul ultimately talks about one baptism. So, but again, that's a whole nother subject. We'll, we'll run that rabbit trail when it is appropriate. Okay. So the chapter concludes with the men going back to Lydia's house, comforting the brethren and then departing again. And so that's, that's pretty much the conclusion of Acts chapter 16. Okay. So what are the common traits between Paul, Silas, and Timothy? got five points and then we're done they were all jews they were all roman citizens all three were highly educated they all faced fear with courage and they all lost blood for the truth so i hope that's an inspiration for you i think we all could use more education when it comes to the things of the bible that's what quick bible study is about is trying to help those that say they're Christians understand why they say, you know, they believe what they say. So if that's you, if you, if you say, I believe in X, Y, Z, whatever that is, but you can't go to the scriptures and actually show anybody why you believe that. That's really what my effort is about is to help Christians mature in the word of God. Okay. I'm going to leave it right there. So thanks for being there, being here with me. And I hope that this has moved you or inspired you in some way. And if it has, please subscribe or follow or whatever the case may be. Maybe even share this video with somebody that you think might get some benefit from it. Okay. My name is Eric Johansson, and I sure appreciate you being here.